Are you looking for truth from God's Word that you can understand and apply to your life? You'll find it today on Make It Clear with Dr. Stan Pons, Bible teacher and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando. Listen now as Stan makes it clear. For right now, if you're saying it feels so hopeless, my world is caving in around me, I'm going to ask you to obey this word right now and turn your heart toward the Lord. Look at Him right now and realize, listen to this phrase, He is bigger and more powerful than any present pain you have right now. Whatever you're going through, I want you to know He is bigger than that and He can resolve that issue in His timing. Give Him that time. Rest in that comfort. Allow His joy to come inside of you that He wants to do something great with you. Don't buy Satan's lie. Next, courage and stability. Here it says, Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Remember, hope sometimes is not a byproduct of trust. Sometimes when I hope in the Lord, it is something that shoves me into trusting the Lord. So for right now, I want you to know that God is on the throne. And that is more powerful than any adverse situation that comes your way. Therefore now, since you can trust him, you will have hope, courage, stability. Number three, and I would like you to put a star by this one, especially moms and dads and those of you that are going to be going into the world of work. People are falling out of work like flies right now. Some 600,000 people are without a job. It's remarkable how many emails I'm getting to me from people that you don't know, that I know, that have lost their jobs or family members that are losing their jobs. It would not surprise me that that uh, unemployment bug can bite a lot of us in this room right here. And so when you get to that point and some of you have major house payments, some of you are looking at an island that will be hard for you to find another job on this island, especially when the unemployment uh, pool of of, of unemployed workers are out there looking for the same job you're trying to get. And you throw that into it that you're maybe 40, 50, 60 years of age and you don't have the same skill set and others are trying to do that and you've got to keep up with your kids and they have needs and they're getting depressed and you don't want them to be depressed and all of a sudden you feel like you're so hopeless and if you don't feel hopeless you probably do now. <laughs> and I don't want you to. So here's a verse. What hope brings you is provision and protection. God will provide for you and God will protect you. No child of God has to be a beggar or will starve to death. It says a horse is a vain hope for safety. Now think about that for a moment. In that day, when they had a horse, horse was safety. Why was it? I can mount my horse and I can go into battle or better yet, I can mount my horse and flee from the enemy, flee from my problems. So some of you, your horse might be the internet. Your horse might be a ticket to the mainland. Your horse might be whatever it is to get you away from where you are. But vain is that horse. Then it says, neither shall it deliver any by its strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. Now I'll talk about fear. So you need to know it. Fear doesn't mean you just shake all around because he's here. Fear means that you respect him, that he is in control, that he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Fear means because I trust him. I also hate what he hates. I hate sin. I hate anything that's going to hinder me from having a clear connection to God. I want to obey him. I fear him. And then it says, on those who hope in his mercy. Circle that phrase, hope in his mercy. When you hope in God, you hope in his mercy. And that's what we want to cry. You know, more, the more times the word mercy is found in all the verses I'm giving to you than other concepts of God. And so maybe some of you right now, you feel like you are so guilty. Maybe you're guilt-ridden that's thrown you into hopeless despair that's driving you to the point of some form of social uh, uh, suicide. And maybe it's because that's what's happening in your life because you feel so guilty. It's your fault, whether it is or not. Satan made you feel guilty. And so what you need to do is fall into the merciful arms of God. You know what mercy is? Mercy is God not giving you what we really do deserve. God says, I'll withhold my judgment. I'm a merciful God. I'd rather look at it this way. God will mete out his judgment the most accurate to you because he really knows what brought you into that state and how much really is your fault and how much isn't your fault. And how that Satan is a dirty bird out there trying to lie to you and deceive you. And the Lord hates that. So you hope in his mercy. Not hope, hope I get mercy. It's I have joy. It's there. 
You've heard me use this illustration. It's being on, like being on a long trip and you see, you've got to go to the restroom and there you see rest stop ahead. Whew, there it is. You hope. You've got hope. I can hold it till I get to that rest stop. And when you get there, I promise you, there won't be a sign that says closed for maintenance. It'll be there for you. Let's go on. It says, to deliver your soul from death. So that hope and His mercy will keep you from any form of separation. And to keep them alive in famine, underline that. That's what hope will do. It will keep you alive. The, the moment that you develop hopelessness, your creative juices of what you could do creatively to provide are gone. It says, our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help. He is our help. Now, you've got Christians in this room. If you starve, we'll starve with you. But we're still not your help. But if you don't have the Lord, what do you have? And go ahead, grab all the, 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 the straw, or excuse me, grab all the, the wooden toothpicks when you're drowning that you want, and you'll feel somewhat safe because there's toothpicks in the water. It looks like you have wood. But I'm going to tell you, you don't. It's only found in Christ. But maybe some of you have got to flounder in the water a little longer before you finally realize that he's the preserver. Well, it goes on, and it's, just, it's rich. For our heart rejoices in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, just as we hope in you. So it provides for you, protects you. Encouragement. Encouragement the opposite of discouragement. When you have hope, you are encouraged. Why are you cast down, O my soul? <laughs> kind of rebuking your own soul. Why am I cast down? Why are you disquieted within me? Kind of like a self-talk. Okay, hope in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So when you start feeling down, listen, listen. When you start feeling discouraged, say, why am I this way? This is wrong. I rebuke it in the name of the Lord. Self-talk in a sense. But I have my hope in the Lord. And in other words, what you're saying is, I'm not listening to you, Satan. Talk to the hand. My hope's in God. Goes on to say here, maturity. For you are my hope again. Everything. You're my hope. Mercy's my hope. My mercy's in you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you are my trust from my youth. I have maturity. I'm going to tell you it's the mature ones. You can be old and immature, and I've known some young ones who are mature. But I will hope continually. Would you circle that word, continually? Some of you, you, have, you go up and down by the last time you had devotion. Some of you go up and down by the, by the you're only as good as the last time you went to church. And you've got to have it continually. Biblical legacy. This kind of slaps me as a dad because it tells me that the testimony in Jacob, the law in Israel, in other words, the word of God, which he commanded our fathers that they, the fathers, should make known to their children that the generation to come might know them. And notice this next phrase, the children who would be born implying pro-life. In other words, it's not only for you, it's not only for your kids, it's for your kids that aren't even born yet. And what does it say? that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God. Now, let me pause and come over here, and I'm not spanking you, folks. What I'm about to say is I, I love you. I, th these arms, is as, lit, as big as this church and those on the radio, as big as this island right now. I really love you. First of all, if our kids have such a high rate of suicidal tendencies, it's... Very likely it's because there's an absence of an accurate knowledge of God in the hearts and minds of those kids. And therefore, hopelessness has swept over them like the biggest winter surf wave. And they're just crashing. And I'm looking over here to say that maybe what I could do is shore them up with some hope as a dad. And to help teach them God's word. Personally, because I have a relationship with them. And if you don't, we've got to get that. So they can see it modeled and mentored and mentioned. But then also, I'm going to put around them the kind of people that are, are walking that which I want them to learn. That they can build an honest relationship with. So they get the word pumped into their life. So now these kids, not only are they suicide. That's a far as thing. I want to live as long as I can. I want to pop those vitamins, not those pills. Because I want my life to go on for God. Now you do that to the kids. I'm telling you, we can really make a difference. And you young people, 
you not only could take that statistic and drag the Hawaii statistics of teens with suicidal tendencies down because you don't commit suicide, but you could drop it dramatically because it's possible in the absence of parents who won't teach their kids, you as another teenager can come alongside another teenager and model a life of hope of joy, of fulfillment, no matter what this world does, no matter what your parents say to you, no matter what your health is, no matter what you don't get for Christmas or your birthday, no matter what they don't let you do, that you still realize that there's still something great in God. I believe it. I believe our young people have that potential. Now, why do I believe that? Because I know their parents. They've got great parents. So again, biblical legacy is left. That's what brings hope. I hope brings us as biblical legacy. It brings us friendship and safety. Those of you that are looking for a, a person to connect with in your life, look what it says here. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in your word. Woo, I like that. In other words, I could be all alone, but when they see me, they kind of light up because they already fear the Lord, but they know that I'm hoping in the word. So they want to be around me. Like people want to be around like people. You know who the most unhappy person, and I don't mean the most, that's too strong of a word, but you know who unhappy people are that are Christians? Watch this. They're the ones that they know better, but they like to play around in the world system and the world values. And while they're there, they're in there, and they're kind of having fun. They're laughing because their mind is just momentarily distracted, and they're thinking, I'm not as bad as some of them and what they're doing, but I'm still having some good time over there. But in their heart, in their heart of hearts, those that are really wanting to be intimate with God, they're struggling with that. This could be married or single, so it's not just single people. And so we're all dealing with that. So in the world, we're not really all that happy because we know it's not really the best. But then we come around Christianity over here, but we haven't totally sold out for the Lord. And we're not really happy here because, you know, he preaches too long. I don't like the music. This isn't good. I don't like that. They're, they didn't say hi. They're, I, 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 whatever reason it is. And so now we're kind of lost and empty and we're not really connecting much with the Lord because we're kind of double-minded. And then we're kind of unstable in all of our ways. And you say, boy, pastor, you're speaking right to me. You know why I can? Because I've been there. And I've been done that. And so I struggled with that when I was growing up in my faith as well. And watch this. When I go on vacation and I get away from my normal routines of, you know, I'm a routine kind of guy. You guys already know that. When I get away from those basic routines, it's so easy for me to slip out of my normal spiritual habits. And all of a sudden, I too kind of think, hey, Everybody's talking about that movie, how great it is. Maybe I ought to go see that movie. And it's R-rated off the chart. I don't feel good about that feeling. And then I kind of feel like I'm kind of drifting. I got to get back to God. And all of a sudden, things are right again. All right, friendship and safety. You are my hiding place and my shield, and I hope in your word. Boy, that's something that I'll preach. Happiness and joy. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help whose hope is in the Lord his God. And then finally, pleasure to the Lord. When I have hope, it makes the Lord smile. He does not delight in the strength of the horse, talking about the Lord. He takes no pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy. Now stop for a moment on that. I was reading a magazine last night, and in that magazine it showed... It had testimony after testimony after testimony with the ugliest pictures of, of men who have been shot up in, in um, Iraq. One guy, they showed his face. It was so distorted, but he's got a full suit on. His brain is completely functioning, and he's operating in a professional job, but he only has two teeth left in his mouth. He's kind of cocked off sideways like this. They had to take special bones and other part of his body to reconstruct his face because a sniper bullet shot him from behind, went through his jaw, shattered his face, and now he's trying to go on for the Lord. And I'm thinking, oh, this poor man. But we don't want to have confidence in all that support system that should be there. If there's no support system, I want you to know God is your richest support. He will make a way. You will never be abandoned by God. You hope in His mercy. Now, I need to bring this to a close. Now, some of you are saying, man, I'd like to have that hope. Where does that come from? How do I get that hope? I want to have that. I don't want to be despairing. 
Now there's a verse that is not on the screen and it's not in your notes. I want you to listen to this very carefully. Everybody just pay attention right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so simple at what I'm about to tell you, you're gonna say, oh, that's too easy. You're gonna say this, you're gonna say, I already knew that. You're gonna say, um, I'm gonna discount this a little bit more. You're gonna say, there's gotta be more to it. There is nothing more than a part of one little tiny verse that if you got this verse activated in your life, you don't have to work up hope. You just have to release it. And here it is. Want to write it down? Colossians 1, verse 27. And it's written only to those who have trusted Christ as their Savior. Not the Baptists, not the Methodists, not the foot-washing Aborigines. It's written to blood-bought, born-again believers in Christ. And here's the verse. I'll quote the portion of it. It says, Christ in you the hope of glory. I told you it was too simple. I told you you've already heard that before. I told you you think there's going to be another way. There is no list I can give to you. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you get feeling hopeless and depressed, even to the point of committing some form of, su of suicide, what that is telling you is that not that you're not a Christian, not that it's not that Christ is not in you, the hope of glory. What it is is that you have somehow mentally disconnected from the Christ who is inside of you, who is the hope that you can have. And so your answer is not to, watch this now, don't denigrate Christ because of what weird Christians told you Christ was like. Or bad Christians model a dysfunctional Christian life and you say, man, I don't want anything to do with it. Well, I don't want it either. Jesus doesn't like a dysfunctional Christian life. The people, but, he, but the purity of it all, the virgin part of it all, is found in Christ, in Christ alone, the hope of glory. And when you trust Christ, you don't get all that dysfunctional stuff in you positionally. You get a perfect Christ inside of you. So whatever's going on in your life, it's the imperfections of the world, and it's the imperfections of Christians who aren't living the purity of the hope of glory of Christ. So what you need to do first and foremost, all of us, is to receive Christ by faith alone, the hope of glory inside of you. And when you do, you hunger and thirst for Him. You'll know it's accurate when you know His Word. But you hunger for Him. And when he now is inside of you and you realize he's in control of everything you can't control, that gives you hope. When you realize he loves you unconditionally just the way you are, even if you've blown it and nobody else loves you and they've rejected you, I want you to know that's Christ in you, the hope of glory. When you feel like he's not going to take care of you, that he's not faithful, I want you to know he is as faithful to everybody he was faithful to in the Bible. That he is always good to you. So, it's the hope of glory of Christ in you. So you need to receive Christ as Savior, and if you have, you need to connect to him. Number three, what could I do to demonstrate this hope? This is pretty simple. This is kind of elementary stuff. Believe that God will do only what is best for me. If you don't believe that, then go ahead, be hopeless. I hope not. I don't want you to be. So believe that God will do only what is best for you. Next, allow God to finish his work on your behalf. Maybe you're right now feeling like you're on the backside of a desert like Moses was. And all you see is nothing but desert, dried up old bushes, and some skinny sheep. I want you to know that God's not finished with you yet. And he's got a great plan for you. Sometimes I think the greater the, the work that he's going to do with you is because he's going to bring you through a longer desert period beforehand. Maybe testing your mettle. And then finally, rejoice through my present struggles. Rejoice through my present struggles as I wait for the positive outcome. And I put positive in quotes because sometimes we define what positive is. Winning the lottery. Getting a better job at the promotion. Finding the right mate. Finally having kids. Whatever it is for you. But 
The positive is what God says is positive. Well, my friend, there's a lot more we could cover, but I think that's enough to let you know that the hope is found in Christ. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust a sweeter frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, right now is your opportunity to come to Christ. You know, when it says Christ in you, the hope of glory, it doesn't say Christ in you, the hope of glory, plus something else. No, it's just Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's all you need. And so how do you get Christ in you? Here's what you do. You simply admit to the Lord that you're a sinner. You miss the mark of God's perfection, that you're outside the faith of Christianity. Now, you may think you're a Christian because you're not Jewish or Muslim or atheist or Buddhist or something, but in a sense, you're not a Christ follower. And so right now, you admit to the Lord, oh, I, I, I've blown it. I, 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 could, I could go over a whole life of sin. In fact, I don't even want to think about it. And I, I want to think more about the good things that I've done. Well, that's okay, but... You still miss the mark of perfection we all have. So you admit that to God. He already knows it. He loves you anyway, but you do admit it. You've got to have that need inside of you or you won't run to the Lord. You've got to smell the smoke in a burning building or you'll never get out. Realize that if you die in that state without finally trusting Christ, you'll spend eternity in hell separated from Him. You talk about hopelessness. It's not when you get to hell... Satan is having one big party down there and he's the party captain. No, he's the worst condemned and judged in that so-called house of party. You're all alone down there. And the worst part of hell isn't the flames. It's that Jesus isn't there. And you'll know it then. And so he says, but I don't want you to go there, man. I want you to be with me. I want you to have hope. So he says, now come to me, not by your good works. It's not religious things that you do. It's not social good deeds, as good as they are. It's coming to me, just as you are, a sinner. And now, will you trust in my son who died and rose again? My son who had the most hopeless situation of all, rejected by man, rejected by his friends, died on a cross that he did not deserve, horribly put to death, and yet, not my will, but thy will be done, he said. Because he knew beyond this Friday of death, so to speak, Sunday is coming. But you've got to trust in that Christ. Christ in you. The hope. He's the hope of glory. He is hope and he provides hope. Is there anyone here today that would say, oh, pastor, I, I, I need that hope. I, I don't know what it's going to look like on the other end, but I need to know that everything is okay and that God is in control and I can trust Him. And my, 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 my home is in heaven now and I've got a future on earth and it's bright because He's the light. Would you now pray for me? So with every head bowed and every eye closed, is there anyone here by faith have received Christ for the full forgiveness of sin? Today, never done it before. And you now would like me to know, without coming forward, without standing up, even raising your hand doesn't get you to heaven, but trusting Christ does. But I'd like to know if you trusted Christ today. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, is there anyone right now, put up your hand right now, my eyes are looking, no one else is, if you're trusting Christ in here today, if you're doing that, anyone at all. All right, let's pray. My gracious Heavenly Father, I know that as we live in this world, we're going to have trouble as the sparks fly upward. I know that no one is going to be totally immune from this economic disaster that's here, that's coming, and that all of us will be affected by immoral judgment by those that are perhaps in a position of influence over us in the political arena, that all of us at times will be let down even by fellow Christians. We're not immune to that. It's going to happen. But Father, that... We know that we have our sins paid for. We have a home waiting for us in heaven. We have a purpose to live for here. And you are the hope of glory. You live in us. And so, Father, we hold our head way up high. So high, Father, that we're looking unto you, the author and finisher of our faith, the God of mercy. And we rejoice and we sing praises for that. So, Father, as we leave this room here without denying the pain that's in this world, 
We still go out celebrating that you are greater than all that pain. You are the healer. And so, Father, help us to be a witness to this world. In Jesus' name, amen. You're listening to Make It Clear with the teaching of Dr. Stan Pons, founder of Make It Clear Ministries and president of Florida Bible College in beautiful Orlando, Florida. Make It Clear is dedicated to taking the Word of God with clarity into every person's world. It is the support of listeners like you who make the ministry of Make It Clear possible. You can provide your tax-deductible gift to Make It Clear online by going to makeitclear.org. Or you can mail your gift to Make It Clear, P.O. Box 607-901, Orlando, Florida, 32860. Thank you for helping us make it clear. If you would like to have Dr. Pond speak at your church or event, please send us an email at tellmemore at makeitclear.org. Thank you, and remember to make it clear.